habitat for little tiny googly invertebrates that we've never seen before. We need that stuff. And we need some protection for it. So the Marine Life Sanctuary Society is a group of dedicated individuals that includes scientists, divers, and they've been working for a long time, back to the 90s, to create actual marine protected areas. And you know, if I went up there and started fishing, who's going to stop me? Uh, and really, should somebody have to stop me? Or is it something that we all need to develop as part of our role as a citizen of this country, as a citizen of an ecological century? So this is Raja Binoculata, and um, skates tend to be sort of a more of a northerly, uh, northerly group. We start seeing stingrays and rays a little farther south than here, in California. Um, this is not a fully grown animal. These guys get up to two meters across and about 90 kilos. They're invertebrate feeders. They feed on hard-bodied invertebrates, crabs, mussels, things like that. This guy's obviously been tagged. You can see what's called a floy tag in his uh, left wing. Hers, actually, this is a female. And uh, anyway, um, but basically a skate is a stepped-on shark. So what you're looking at is a shark that's been flattened out uh, dorsoventrally. Um, one of the ways you distinguish skates from rays, typically rays are round, and these guys are more trapezoidal shaped, and of course rays, stingrays have stings. You can actually see the start of the gill arch right there. These are actually what are called dermal denticles. These are little calcified spikes that are embedded in the skin, and they're quite, they're quite sharp to the touch. These are, these are edible, and in fact the wings here are what's harvested commercially, but they're, they're rather, they're rather, um, they're not the sort of thing you actually want to harvest because they're very slow growing and very long lived. So the fisheries don't tend to be very sustainable. Here's the mouth, the oral cavities here, and you can see these very, um, here's the jaw, and it's eversible, so they actually can evert the jaw. And another cool thing, look inside the mouth there, see those little white things that look like tadpoles? Those are copepods, they're parasites, see them? All over the pharynx in there. Tag site looks a bit infected and inflamed, is that what so you it may do? be septicemia. Is that what you want? Clam out of the bottom with it, or they can scrape food off rocks and so on. And they do that, and you also see these little appendages on the end here. These are sensory, see those? They also have these things called ampullae of Lorenzini all over the nose here. All the little black dots that aren't sand are actually <laughs> electroreceptors. So these guys basically swim over the bottom, they detect things buried in the bottom or flat on the bottom and they eat them. See, normally I would do this with a great big post-mortem knife, so we're going to have to just sort of improvise. These guys have a two-chambered heart, there's a ventricle there, atria there, and they have a mixed arterial and venous system. And in fact, you can see there are the two vena cava, there's one there and one there. Gills are there. This is a very skinny animal. That's an extremely emaciated liver. Mm. Oh. Here's the stomach, okay? The esophagus comes down here. Huge stomach. Now the stomach is a very, very short area of small intestine. That's the pancreas there, right there. And then you get right into this wonderful structure called a spiral pine cone. And that's quite a large one. Now the other thing, see these white nodules? These are parasites right in the wall of the of the spiral valve. Any bottom feeding flatfish type animal, they're eating bottom of the food chain and they're usually loaded with parasites and this guy's no exception. She's not yet mature. That's one of the uterine horns and that's her ovary right there. And you can see it sitting in the in the broad ligament. Right so why don't we see what she has in her stomach here? It's about the body length of an animal and that's typical in most sharks. The gut length is about the same as body length. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. We've got a budding biologist over here. Yeah. This is a giant tapeworm. Yeah. Wow. Oh, Pretty impressive, eh? And it's still alive. Oh. <laughs> I know you guys are dying to find out what's in the stomach, aren't you? This is really yeah, interesting. What's so tonight. this is the remains of what's called a tanner crab. It's a awesome. common deep sea crab, and they're good to eat. So that's a tanner crab there. Very interesting, and it's very soft. And this is cool because uh, halibut and flatfish tend to find these right after they've molted and when they're easy to ingest and they're soft and then they ha the shell hardens oh. up. So that's kind of a cross section of the wing of the skate because it's cartilage in the middle and meat on both sides. The meat being muscle and of course that's how they that's how they fly through the water. Things like fingers, they're called pterygophores. And there's actually quite a market for this. This flesh is all edible. You see the pterygophores in the middle and then the muscle on each side. This is one of these species that's what's called a poorly known species. Right. So it's not a well-known animal. So you can see the tag there and there's a big scar associated with that. This is a few months old and it's monofilament and it actually has a coat on the side of it there. Seen this and get a uh, 
and, and like a tree ring, you can you can stain it with a silver stain, and you can actually count the rings.